The Fate of Empires and Search for Survival by Sir John Glubb John Bagot Glubb was born in 1897, his father being a regular officer in the Royal Engineers. At the age of four, he left England for Mauritius, where his father was posted for a three-year tour of duty. At the age of ten, he was sent to school for a year in Switzerland. These youthful travels may have opened his mind to the outside world at an early age. He entered the Royal Military Academy at Woolwich in September 1914, and was commissioned in the Royal Engineers in April 1915. He served throughout the First World War in France and Belgium, being wounded three times and awarded the Military Cross. In 1920, he volunteered for service in Iraq as a regular officer, but in 1926 resigned his commission and accepted an administrative post under the Iraq government. In 1930, however, he signed a contract to serve the Transjordan government, now Jordan. From 1939 to 1956, he commanded the famous Jordan Arab Legion, which was, in reality, the Jordan Army. Since his retirement, he has published 17 books, chiefly on the Middle East, and has lectured widely in Britain, the United States, and Europe. Introduction As we pass through life, we learn by experience. We look back on our behaviour when we were young, and think how foolish we were. In the same way, our family, our community and our town endeavour to avoid the mistakes made by our predecessors. The experiences of the human race have been recorded in more or less detail for some 4,000 years. If we attempt to study such a period of time in as many countries as possible, we seem to discover the same patterns constantly repeated under widely differing conditions of climate, culture and religion. Surely, we ask ourselves, if we studied calmly and impartially the history of human institutions and development over these 4,000 years, should we not reach conclusions which would assist to solve our problems today? For everything that is occurring around us has happened again and again before. No such conception ever appears to have entered into the minds of our historians. In general, historical teaching in schools is limited to this small island. We endlessly mull over the Tudors and the Stuarts, the Battle of Crecy and Guy Fawkes. Perhaps this narrowness is due to our examination system, which necessitates the careful definition of a syllabus which all children must observe. I remember once visiting a school for mentally handicapped children. Our children do not have to take examinations, the headmaster told me, and so we are able to teach them things which will be really useful to them in life. However this may be, the thesis which I wish to propound is that priceless lessons could be learned if the history of the past 4,000 years could be thoroughly and impartially studied. In these two articles, which first appeared in Blackwood's magazine, I have attempted briefly to sketch some of the kinds of lessons which I believe we could learn. My plea is that history should be the history of the human race, not of one small country or period.